Brothers and sisters, divine jubilee. And today is the fourth session. In part one, we looked at the introduction. And there we established clearly that jubilee is a time of celebration of joy, celebration of freedom, celebration of liberty. It is a time of celebration of salvation and unlimited favor of God. Glory be to God. As it was in the Old uh, Testament, in the law, according to Leviticus chapter 25, verses 9 and 10. Glory be to God. And in part two, we looked at the details of the provision and we saw eight headlines of what I have just mentioned. We put it into eight headlines. You can always look at part two. Yeah, it's, it's, it's rich. And then in part three, we looked at the provision in Christ Jesus, the divine jubilee which is where our text has been taken from. So we're going to then look at our text. We looked at the provision. So in part two, we look at the provision of Jubilee in the law, the Old uh, Testament, uh, the law of Moses, as I just mentioned. And then in part three, we look at God's provision for us today in the divine jubilee through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So let's look open to our text in Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4, verse 18 and 19. Luke chapter 4, verses 18 and 19. Let us read. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the law. That is verse 19. And I like again to emphasize the amplified version, which says of that verse 19, to proclaim the day when salvation and the free favors of God profusely abound. And that's why we have made the point simple that in Christ Jesus, we have everything that was provided for in the law of Jubilee and much more than that. For example, if we read the prophecy in Isaiah chapter 61, just again to remind ourselves, the prophecy which Jesus confirmed here in Isaiah chapter 61, you will see there that in verse 2, it says to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, which is where, what verse, where verse 19 stopped. But then continue to say, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they may be called the trees of righteousness. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Through Jesus Christ, God has reconciled us unto himself. God has forgiven us all our sins, not just atonement as it were in the law of Jubilee. We have been sanctified, cleansed, forgiven forever 
to walk in the newness of life in Christ Jesus as long as we continue in Christ Jesus. So it says that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. He, God Almighty, may be glorified to declare the day of God's vengeance in both ways that in Jesus Christ, the world will be judged. And in fact, that judgment already starts now. That's why anyone who touches you, God says, he has touched the apple of my eye, the day of God's vengeance. And the day of vengeance of our God. This world will come to an end one day. Whether by our time being completed here in by death or the final judgment day that Almighty God has determined. So in Christ Jesus, the world is judged and only waiting for that final day. And that's what the scripture says there. Just again to say that in Christ Jesus, the divine jubilee, we have come to this unlimited favor of God. We also established that for jubilee to take place, the trumpet will sound to declare jubilee, just as you have heard read there. And we've seen what God has said concerning his son in part three. We looked at a few things. What has God announced concerning his son? So in this Luke chapter four again, if we read verses 20 and 21, when Jesus read this scripture, 20 he says, then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him, 21. And he began to say to them today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. I want to make something clear here. You see, the day you hear this and have revelation and understanding, because God has already pro proclaimed it, then it is fulfilled in your ears. So we talk about a number of things that the father has said about his son, and he, Jesus Christ, also have proclaimed about himself. Because the father said, whatever he says, whatever Jesus Christ says, we should listen to him. Moses in the law also said, Whatever this prophet says, that we, we must hear him and we must do what he says. I want to announce to you what Jesus, the divine jubilee, the one who has declared these unlimited favors of God, has said concerning you, concerning me. Glory be to God. Glory be to Jesus. If you can't key into this life of divine jubilee, my Lord, brothers and sisters, the provision of God in Christ Jesus are yours to enjoy. Just as the people of old in the year of jubilee enjoyed the provisions of God as we uh, uh, enumerated them. Atonement was there. Forgiveness was there. Liberty was there. In fact, that was a very key word. Freedom was there. Restoration to one's possession, to one's family. Freedom from every form of enslavement, freedom from every form of oppression. Righteousness in dealings was pronounced in the land. God's sustenance, abundance, unlimited abundance was there, unlimited favors, safety, redemption unconditionally and release 
It was a time of rejoicing, joy, and celebration. Above all this, Jesus Christ announced to us here, he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he has anointed me to proclaim the good news, this good news of what God has sent me to do for mankind. And you know, in John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. And I want to just take us quickly to John chapter 16. Let's start from there. John chapter 16. To guide us, verse 23. Read that with me. John chapter 16, verses 23 and 24. And in that day, you will ask me nothing. Most assuredly, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. 24. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive that your joy may be full. This is what we mean by this unlimited favor. That the Almighty God has brought to us through Jesus Christ. So much so that anything you ask the Father in the name of Jesus, you receive the answer. Glory be to God. Let me again also take us to John chapter 14. John chapter 14, verses 13 and 14. Because at times, people... I don't understand the distinction between these two points. John chapter 14, verses 13 and 14. Let's read it together. He said, and whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. So, in John chapter 16, Jesus said, ask the Father. That is consistent with what Jesus taught us in Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. Let's just remind ourselves from verse 9. It says, in this manner, therefore, pray. Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. In this manner, therefore, pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. So we pray to our Father in heaven. Always to our Father in heaven when we pray. So then, what did Jesus mean when he said in John chapter 14, verses 13 and 14? He says, and whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. So Jesus here did not say when you pray in my name. That's the difference. He said, when you ask anything. So Jesus has given us authority to speak in his name. And you see the apostles demonstrating this many times in the book of Acts. So after this, you go and study again so you can uh, assimilate this better. So in Acts chapter 3, because we want to minister to ourselves, according to all the provisions of this divine jubilee. Hallelujah. But we must know how to ask. If you start Acts chapter 3, if you start from verse 1, it says, Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful to ask alms from those who entered the temple. Three, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for alms. Four, and fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, look at us. Verse five, read five with me. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Six, then Peter said, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you 
in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. So this is what Jesus was saying. If you ask anything in my name, not, he did not say if you pray anything to me, you know. So we pray to the Father in the name of Jesus. But there are things Jesus has said specifically that we will ask in his name. Healing is one. Deliverance from the power of darkness is another. Performing his miracle signs. Jesus is with us. He is in his church. Remember in the book of Revelation, the Bible says John in that revelation said he saw one that is like the image of the son of man. I think we should just look at it. It says, then I turned. I'm reading from verse 12. Then I turned to see the voice that spoke with me. And having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands, 13. And in the midst of the seven lampstands, one like the son of man, clothed with a garment down to the feet and gathered about the chest with a golden band. Head and head were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes like a flame of fire. His feet were like fine brass, as if refined in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. He had in his right hand seven stars. Out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was like the sun shining in its strength. 17, and when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, but he said, but he laid his right hand on me, saying to me, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of hits and of death. Who is this? Who is this? One like the son of man whose head and hair were white like wool, as white as snow. And his countenance is like the sun when it shines in its full strength. Who is this glorious king? His name is Jesus, the one who lives forever and was dead and he's alive. The one who holds the keys of hits, of grave, of hell, and of death. Jump with me to verse 20. Revelation chapter 1, verse 20. So he went further. If I, let's read 19 and 20. He said, write the things which you have seen, and the things which are, and the things which will take place after this. He says, the mystery of the seven stars which you saw in my right hand, and the seven golden lampstands. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven lampstands which you saw are the seven churches. I've explained this to you that this is the archetype of the body of Christ in different cities, different representations. You and I are members of that body. There are all over the world, as many as have come to Christ, have come into his body, have come into his church. And Jesus is in the midst of his church continually. And so when we say, ask anything in the name of Jesus, we receive it. And so when we are praying, we pray to the Father and ask the Father in the name of Jesus. But as the apostles demonstrated what Jesus meant there in John chapter 14, he says, anything you ask in my name, I will do it. When we speak, we speak in the name of Jesus. You can see here that Peter didn't pray. Peter knew Jesus is with him all the time. 
Peter knew the name of Jesus carries power, unlimited power. That if he says anything in that name, according to what Jesus has commanded us to say, to do on his behalf, according to his provision, according to the word of God, Jesus will do it because he said, if you ask or if you say anything or if you ask anything, I will do it. That is what John chapter 14 verses 13 and 14 is talking about. But John chapter 16 says, when we pray to the Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Now let's look at very specific things that we must pray about and speak about. So Peter here did not pray. He said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. Do you remember what Jesus said in Mark chapter 11? From verse 23, it says, if you say to this mountain, but we don't say it of our own, we say in the name of Jesus. You remember that? Let's just look at it. Verse 23, Jesus was speaking here from verse 22. He said, so Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God, for surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart. They believe that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Say it according to the word of God. And so Peter here said, silver and gold I do not have, but the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Why did Peter say this? Let's go to Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. And then we'll pray because I want you today to enjoy the Jubilee. Hallelujah. We all must enjoy the Jubilee. So Mark chapter 16, let's read from verse 17 to 20. Read it with me. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. Did you hear in my name, they will pray for demons to leave? So this is what Jesus was talking about. In John chapter 14, versus John chapter 16, where we pray to the Father, consistent with how Jesus taught us in Matthew chapter 6 from verse 9 down. Pray in this manner, our Father who art in heaven. So we pray to the Father in the name of Jesus. But when we exercise the authority that Jesus has given to us, is, for example, in Luke chapter 10, you know, verse 19, Jesus said, Behold, I give you power. I give you authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. And you saw the apostles demonstrated that times and times again in the book of Acts. When the viper fastened to the hand of Paul, Paul shook it into the fire. He didn't have to start praying because he knew Jesus said, you would take serpents, let's come back to Mark chapter 16 then. So we're reading from verse 17, pay attention. He said, and these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. How do we cast out demons? In the name of Jesus. And so whatever affliction of the devil in your life, in my life, in anybody's life that is connected, it is in the name of Jesus. It says they will speak with new tongues. What does it mean, speak with new tongues? It means in his name, we will operate in the Holy Spirit because it's only the Holy Spirit that helps us to speak in tongues. In my name, it's only through Jesus that we have access to the Holy Spirit and his operation, including speaking in tongues. It says they will take up serpents. Serpents, whether the physical serpent or the spiritual serpent, which is 
the representative of devils, of the devil, of Satan, all his affliction, all his works. Just like Jesus said in that new chapter uh, 10, 19, Behold, I give you authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So Jesus, he said, in my name. So in the name of Jesus, we command and cast out demons. We take authority over serpents. And it goes further, I'm reading verse 18, read it with me. He said, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. Oh, when I was studying this word before this meeting, this is the ministration that was given to me. If you drink anything deadly, it's not just drinking. If you eat anything deadly, whether it is physical poison that you have eaten or you have drunk, it will do you no harm. Not that you will go and take poison and drink, but Jesus was fortifying us in his name, knowing that the devil and his agents are wicked. Now, the one that was given to me specifically to speak to your life, speak to my life, is the spiritual poison. Those of you that have been eating in the dream, you have been given food to, to eat in the dream. That poison in the name of Jesus is hereby counseled and condemned. It shall do you no harm. It shall do me no harm in the name of Jesus. And the source of that evil dream, that evil food, is hereby commanded to seek in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus continued, oh, I just had a word. I just had a word. If the affliction that the enemy has put in your body, I command that affliction to go down. If I join me, join me and pray. Brothers and sisters, it's time to pray. We are not waiting anymore. Lift your voice to heaven and say, in the name of Jesus, every affliction of the devil put in my body, I command you to go now. I command you to go now. Every affliction that the devil has put in my body by the law of divine jubilee in Christ Jesus, I am free from every affliction. And so in the name of Jesus, I command your affliction go from my body. Every affliction, every affliction, every affliction, every infirmity, every sickness, every disease. In the name of Jesus, I command you to go. Join me and pray that prayer right now. Pray that prayer right now. Every affliction that the enemy has put in my body, however it came, every sickness, every disease, every infirmity in my body, in the name of Jesus, I command you to go in the name of Jesus. By the decree of the Almighty God, in Christ Jesus, the divine jubilee, I have been set free. I am free from sickness. I am free from disease. I am free from sin. I am free from the power of darkness in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Almighty God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, we have decreed. Continue to, to read with me and we'll pray that prayer more. So I was reading 18. Let's repeat it. He said, they will take up serpents and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. So whether your food was infested by whatever satanic operation, whether your picture was taken to anywhere, it is written that no enchantment against Jacob, neither is there any divination against Israel. And that everlasting covenant that God made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob has been passed on to you and I through Jesus Christ. And so it is your portion. So this is what Jesus was detailing out here in, uh, in, 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 in key headlines. If you drink anything deadly, if they do anything, if you take up serpents, physical serpent, spiritual serpent, in any way, in any form, it will not hurt you. 
Glory be to God. Join me and raise your voice again to heaven and say in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the divine jubilee of freedom, of liberty that you have given to me. By your divine jubilee, almighty God, in Christ Jesus, I thank you for setting me free from every oppression, from every form of enslavement, in whatever form, in whatever way. I thank you, almighty God. And now, my Father in heaven, I ask, let me enjoy that divine freedom. Let me enjoy that divine liberty in Christ Jesus now, in the name of Jesus. Let your freedom manifest in my life. Let your liberty manifest in my life, in my family, in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray that prayer as you have heard. You can see the difference when we pray and when we are speaking. In the name of Jesus, when we are commanding things as Jesus has provided, and when we are praying to the Father God Almighty in the name of Jesus, because Jesus said, if you ask the Father anything in my name, the Father loves you and he will do it. He will do it for you. He will do it for me. He will do it for us. If you ask the Father anything in my name, that's prayer. While Jesus has asked us to command, to lay hands on the sick, to speak to the mountains in his name. Go ahead and pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the provisions of the divine jubilee in Christ Jesus, the liberty, the freedom. Thank you, almighty God. By that freedom, by that liberty in Christ Jesus, Lord God Almighty, I ask, let that freedom, let that liberty manifest in my life, in every aspect of my life. In the name of Jesus Christ, raise your voice to heaven again and pray and say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for the unlimited favors in the divine jubilee through my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, I pray now, oh, let your unlimited favors, your goodness, your mercy overtake me. In the day, in the night, overtake me today, overtake my entire household. Now go ahead and pray for yourself and pray for your household. Pray for all your needs, whatever they are. Pray, pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Be specific. You can hear. Ask the Father. Ask the Father. Ask the Father. Ask the Father. Ask him. Ask him. That divine favor in that career, in that business, in whatever it is, go ahead and ask in the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus, whatever you ask the Father in my name, Jesus said, he will do it, the Father will do it. Whatever you ask the Father, he will do it, it will be done for you. It will be done for you. And whatever you say in my name, I, Jesus, will do it because I'm always with you. He says, lo, I am with you. Always, always, even unto the ends of the earth. And so go ahead, ask the Father, and go ahead and speak to your mountains. I hope you understand now. So you ask the Father what you desire, and you speak to the mountains according to what Jesus has provided and asked us to do. So it's very clear here in Mark chapter 16. And this sign, keep praying as I read. As I, as I read, you pray. And these signs will follow those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons. Go ahead and terminate every operation and walk of the enemy, walk of demons in any way, in any form, in and around your life and your family. Include your family in this prayer. In the name of Jesus, said they will speak with new tongues. The empowerment, the enablement of the Holy Spirit. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, I've explained it. And I've spoken specifically what I was given. Somebody, you have been having bad dreams. You have been eating food in the dream. 
that poison is being flushed out of your body now in the name of Jesus. Sometimes that's the way sickness is injected into uh, people's body. That's how the enemy afflict people with sickness. Sickness can come of its own natural course, of course. But this specific one, it must go now. Whatever the enemy injected into your body, into our bodies, into the body of members of your family, in the name of Jesus, I command it to go. And you join your voice and command it to go. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. They will take up serpents, the symbol of the enemy. Every oppression of the enemy must be terminated now by the law of, the, of Jubilee. For in Christ Jesus, no oppression, no enslavement. In the name of Jesus, every form of enslavement, every form of oppression ceases in your life, ceases in my life now. In the name of Jesus. Now let's continue. Let's continue. Oh, it says it will by no means hurt them. I'm reading verse 18, the last part. It says they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Put your hand upon your forehead and begin to speak forth now and say in the name of Jesus. I speak to you, my body, and I command every cell in my body be made well, be whole, be made whole, be healed now. Be made well and be made whole in the name of Jesus. For it is written in the name of Jesus, I will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. And so I command my body to recover from every sickness, every disease, every affliction, every infirmity now in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak forth by the stripes of Jesus I am healed now. I was healed when Jesus was stripped on the cross, when he was bruised and wounded on the cross. And I remain healed now. And I remain healed forever in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Read 19 and 20 with me. So then after the Lord has spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. 20, and they went out and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Amen. The accompanying signs, brothers and sisters. When we gather like this in the name of Jesus, he said, I, I am always in, uh, in their midst. Whenever two or three are gathered in my name. You remember that? Matthew chapter 18. Let's go there. So we need to remind ourselves of this. Matthew chapter 18 verse 20. He said, for where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. That's consistent with the revelation that was given to John, the beloved. So, as it happened to the apostles, as recorded here in Mark chapter 16, verse 20. And they went out and preached everywhere as we are sharing and magnifying the name of Jesus now. It says the Lord working, Jesus himself working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Jesus says, if you ask me in my name, in the name of Jesus, you ask for sickness to go as I have said, I will do it. And so it is done for you. That sickness is out of your body, out of my body, in the name of Jesus. Now open your Bible to, with me to 1 John. 1 John, that's where we're going to wrap up now. 1 John. I want you to learn this and know so you can have victory in your life. You know, many people are looking for people to pray for them. Yes, when we pray, 
minister to our fellow brothers and sisters, what God has provided will happen. It's good to pray. However, you need to be able to sustain it. And that's why I always try to uh, teach people to minister with me uh, unto themselves as I minister to myself. Glory be to God. First John chapter 5. First John chapter 5. Let's read from verse 10. So we're talking about what the father has said concerning his son, the testimony. First John chapter 5, verse 10. It says, he who believes in the Son of God has the witness in himself. Note that he who believes in the Son of God has the witness in himself. He who does not believe God has made him a liar because he has not believed the testimony that God has given of his Son. Please pay attention to this. This is very important in your spiritual life as a Christian. I'll repeat it, pay attention again, and let the Holy Spirit speak to you. It says, he who believes in the Son of God has the, it is the witness, the witness, the witness. That's what God says concerning his Son and what Jesus himself has said. That's the witness, just like we saw there. You have it in yourself. You have it with you. You have it living in you. You have it available to you has the witness in himself. He who does not believe God has made him a liar because he has not believed the testimony. He has not believed what God says, the testimony that God has given of his son. Now pay attention to verse 11. And this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his soul. So that's that testimony he said you have in yourself. I have in myself. If you believe in Jesus Christ, the son of God, God has said that you have eternal life. Dwelling in you, dwelling in me. Glory be to God. Read 11 now with me again. And this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his soul. He who has the son has life. He who does not have the son of God does not have life. 13. These things I have written to you who believe in the name. Where do we believe and what do we believe? In the name of the son of God. That you may know that you have eternal life and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. Lift your voice with me to heaven and say, in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, I thank you for giving me eternal life through your Son, Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, let that eternal life that you have given to dwell in me by your testimony. Your testimony cannot fail. Your word cannot fail. You are not a man that you should lie. Neither are you the son of man that you should repent. What you say is forever settled in heaven. By your testimony, I thank you for giving me eternal life. Through my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let that eternal life manifest in me now. In the name of Jesus. I receive that eternal life now. In the name of Jesus. And I confess according to the word of God. Oh, you, my body. Eternal life. The life of God. In Christ Jesus dwells in you. Eternal life cannot be sick. Therefore, you, my body, you can no longer be sick. Eternal life lives in divine health. Therefore, you, my body, from now on, in the name of Jesus, live in divine health. Eternal life lives in divine provision. Eternal life lives 
in divine blessing, divine promotion, divine prosperity, divine preservation, divine protection. Go ahead and leave the blessings of the eternal life. For the abundant life in Christ Jesus has been given to you, give it to me. Go ahead and list them, and list them, and list them, and confess them. They are yours. They are yours. God has given you, given me eternal life. This is the testimony that he that believes in the Son of God has the witness in himself. That if you have the Son, you have life. You have eternal life. We have eternal life. Heavenly Father, let that eternal life you have given to me through my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ manifest now in every aspect of my life. Let it manifest in my physical body, manifest in my spiritual well-being, manifest in my social well-being, manifest in my career, in my business. Let that eternal life touch everything in my life in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, you are my divine jubilee. You are our divine jubilee. You are our divine jubilee. We celebrate the freedom that you have given to us. We celebrate the liberty that you have given to us. We celebrate the joy and peace that you have given to us. We celebrate the divine liberty of peace you have given to us. We celebrate the unlimited favor of God that you have brought to us. We thank you, our Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We want to agree, but before we agree, I want you to take one more minute. You see, ministering to yourself doesn't take a lengthy thing. It's to know the word to know what God has provided for you, to believe in Jesus Christ through whom everything comes, and to ask God in the name of Jesus and to speak and confess in the name of Jesus the word of God as God has said it and as Jesus Christ has said it Concerning you, concerning me, concerning Now that you know, now that we know, pray, pray and speak and pray and speak and pray and speak. Now you understand how to pray and how to speak, how to confront your mountains and how to pray. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Let's bring our prayer to a close in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I want you to join me to pray this prayer wherever you're joining from. I want you to join me, please, to pray for my country, Nigeria. Um, because the ministration I've received is that this anniversary year of Nigeria. So Nigeria turns 62 right, and has entered into the 23rd year anniversary. So it's going to be 23rd by next, uh, I mean, sorry, 63rd, uh, 63rd, forgive me, is the year 2023 that I'm replacing. <laughs> it's going to be 63, right, in the next anniversary. Since independence, Nigeria has been struggling to enjoy the jubilee side of independence. Independence ought to come with jubilee. That is the freedom, the liberty. So an independent nation without the liberty to function and operate whatever way, whatever form, to be the giant that she is. The ministration is that this year, this one year, Nigeria will exper experience her jubilee. Would you be willing to join me to pray that prayer? Two prayer points. Raise your voice with me and say, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the law of jubilee in Christ Jesus. 
We pray for Nigeria, almighty God, that in this year, this anniversary of Nigeria, Father God, let Nigeria experience divine jubilee, experience freedom and liberty to be that great nation. Let Nigeria experience freedom and liberty to be the great nation you have created Nigeria to be. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we join our faith and our voices together and we pronounce divine jubilee upon Nigeria. Every oppression cease. Every oppression, oppression, enslavement cease right now in the name of Jesus. And let the favors of the Almighty God be upon Nigeria. And let Nigeria be raised, be raised, be lifted to that place that the Almighty God has ordained for her as a nation in the name of Jesus. Now pray the second prayer point with me, which is the one we started praying since uh, uh, end of last year to the beginning of this year. Pray with me and say, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your will and your plan and purpose for Nigeria. If you're from Nigeria, say for my, from, for my nation, Nigeria. Heavenly Father, we ask in the name of Jesus, raise up a fresh branch for us in Nigeria to lead us in righteousness. Raise up a fresh branch according to your will and your purpose for us in Nigeria to lead Nigeria and lead us according to your righteousness. Lead us in your righteousness. Thank you, our Heavenly Father. Thank you, our Lord and our King. Glory be to your holy name. For we have prayed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We want to round off now. But I thank you, especially brothers and sisters, wherever you have joined, to pray. And let's continue to pray according to the understanding we have received. Jesus Christ is our divine jubilee. And it is no more every 50 years as it used to be in the law. We enjoy this jubilee every second, every minute, every hour, every day, weeks months, years, all the days of our lives, we enjoy divine jubilee. And so I decree over your life and your family and over my life and my family that from today, the jubilee of God in Christ Jesus will never cease, but we will continue daily to celebrate the freedom and liberty of God in Christ Jesus. We will continue to celebrate and enjoy the salvation of God in Christ Jesus. We will continue to celebrate the unlimited favor of God in Christ Jesus for our lives, now and forevermore, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Agree with me and say, Heavenly Father, thank you for your law of divine jubilee in Christ Jesus. And thank you for all the prayer points we have brought to you in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we agree according to your word for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the faithful witness has spoken Whatever we agree, the Father will do for us. We agree in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, that you will do everything we have asked. And much more than we have asked, you will do what your almighty power can do. You will do everything you have ordained plan, propose to do in our lives. Heavenly Father, we agree that your goodness, your mercy, and your unlimited favors will overtake us now. 
this week, this month, this year, all the days of our lives, in the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we agree specifically that this ministration will continue and you will continue to give us understanding by your Holy Spirit. Revive every one of us by your Spirit. Let the Spirit of grace and supplication be given to us. In the name of Jesus. Let the Spirit of might and power be given to us. Be granted us. Let the quickening of your Holy Spirit, O oh God Almighty, take effect in our lives. And let us all be transformed into the measure of the fullness of Christ. The statue the, of, of the measure of the fullness of Christ. Thank you, our Lord and our God. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen.